be the first key area of PowerPoint with us narrating over the top of it, just for some extra detail in case you were struggling with the sway. Uh, there are three PowerPoints on here, so we've divided key area one into three sections. Bear in mind, the work over these three PowerPoints would normally take more than a week in class. Now that's six periods of work, that's about three hours, four or five hours of stuff. Okay, so do not tackle this all at once. Take breaks and uh, make sure that you understand an idea before moving on. You can replay slides, you can go back over stuff. Don't rush through this. Don't try and think you have to hit it all at once. Okay, so this is the first section of key area one, which is going to be about somatic and germline cells. Okay, so we've taken that first key area, divide it into three. Here is section one. Okay, so in terms of the stuff you should know from National 5, unless you're crash hiring, which in that case I would recommend go on something like BBC Bite Size or get a textbook and have a look over this stuff. Um, you've learned cells are basic units of living things, you should all know that anyway. Uh, multicellular organisms are one that are made up of more than one cell and these kind of different jobs. Um, you learn a bit about the cell hierarchy and then specialisation, so the idea of cells and tissues and organs and systems and all these working together. Um, so a similar type of cell, so say one, you have one muscle cell, a group of muscle cells form a muscle tissue, or you could have all your tissues working together to form an organ like your heart. So a wee bit of your cell hierarchy stuff coming into this. Um, also, mitosis, the big thing, obviously you should all be really, really good at this now because you've just done a task on it. Um, and the main reason of that being we want it to be fresh in your head because we're going to touch on it. We're not necessarily going to go into this into it in the same way National 5 did, we're kind of assuming that you already know it. That's what's in higher is they are assuming you know National 5 mitosis, so we're not going to teach you it. We're going to ask you stuff assuming you already have that basic knowledge. So um, hopefully it's fresh in your mind, but the idea of DNA is obviously found in the nucleus in the forms of chromosomes. A normal cell, which in this slide it says it's called a somatic cell, we're just about to touch on what that actually means. That wasn't covered at National 5, um, but the thing that was covered, which actually a lot of you didn't mention in your poster, mm. is the idea of the diploid chromosome complement. So that idea that all the chromosomes come in pairs or sets of two, and this is known as the diploid chromosome complement, which in humans is 46 or 23 pairs, and that is a diploid number. Remember how it was different than sperm and egg number. And then obviously the whole process of um, mitosis as a whole, you should know from National 5. OK, the video link there, it's about five minutes long. Click on the link if you're interested in just doing a little bit more of a review. OK, so somatic cells, I said this on the last side. So somatic cells, which are specialised cells, they are basically normal body cells. And what I mean by this is we are not talking about our specific reproductive cells. So when we talk about sperm and egg, we're ignoring them. This is just your regular body cells. So things like your skin cells, your hair cells, your muscle cells, all the normal things that are your diploid chromosome complement cells that we would talk about in the body. There's a list on this slide that you can see as well. And all of these have a specialised role or specific role that they do in the body. Um, so making more somatic cells, so all of these types of cells, they make more of themselves by doing the process mitosis, which you have all just told us about and you should all know nice about. So we're not going to touch on that too much. But you need to know that somatic cells make more of themselves through this process. Um, so Again, remembering the, the diploid chromosome complement, so a diploid somatic cell will divide into two to produce two identical diploid cells. So just that process of mitosis you learned about, that is what this is showing, that's what this is talking about, that is what somatic cells do. And you just need to know, starting with that diploid chrom chromosome complement, goes through mitosis, finishes with two identical daughter cells with that full diploid complement. Really important that you're talking about the diploid numbers when you're talking about somatic cells, producing more somatic cells through mitosis. OK, so that's essentially it for somatic cells and what you need to know about them. The second type of cell we're going to have a look at is germline cells. Now, germline cells are a special type of cell that are only found in reproductive organs. So that's the ovaries in females where eggs are produced and the testes in male where sperm are produced. OK, now germline cells can make more germline cells. If you think about males, they can keep producing sperm forever, you know, until they're about 80 years old. They don't run out of sperm. This means they have to have a supply of cells that are going to produce sperm, and they do. So the idea is this, uh, these uh, cells will divide by mitosis to make sure that there are lots of uh, germline cells still available to make sperm. 
Okay. Um, now, they can also do a different type of division, as I was talking about for sperm, called meiosis. Now, germline cells are diploid, okay, so they start out with two sets of chromosomes, one set from mom, one set from dad, but when they do meiosis, they do a special kind of division that ends with four haploid gametes being produced, okay? And that makes sense because they're found in reproductive organs. So they're found in your reproductive organs, and they can either keep producing more of themselves or they can produce four haploid gametes to produce sex cells. OK, so if we have a look at that process there, this little image is just showing the idea of meiosis there. Now, um, some of you may have covered meiosis a little bit before. Uh, maybe you had a look at it while you were looking for mitosis stuff. Um, but essentially, there's a little bit of detail about homologous chromosomes lining up against each other and then separating. And then it looks a bit like mitosis where the chromosomes all line up. Chromatids attach and chromatids separate. But essentially, all you need to know for meiosis is that there are two divisions and it ends up with four haploid gametes produced at the end. So let's look at the germline cells in the ovary. Okay, so this is in the female. You'd start out with a, germ, a diploid germline cell. Meiosis would happen. Two divisions occur in meiosis. You need to know that difference between mitosis. Mitosis is one division, meiosis is two. Okay, and then four haploid gametes are produced at the end, which will be converted into egg cells for female reproduction. In the males, you have germline cells sitting in the testes. They will go through meiosis and they'll produce four haploid gametes at the end, which will be converted into sperm cells. OK, and they'll be haploid. Remember, they've got half the amount of DNA. So in humans, where you have uh, 46 chromosomes in your diploid germline cell, you're going to have 23 chromosomes in each of the haploid gametes that is produced at the end. OK, now. Germline cells are going to become cells that produce an embryo. Okay, so sperm and egg fuse together to produce a zygote, and then an embryo is produced that will become a new living thing. If there are mutations in that germline cell, so say the sperm is mutated or the egg is mutated, then that can be passed off onto offspring. Okay, and um, so if it, your germline cells are mutated, it can result in mutated offspring. Mutations in somatic cells, normal body cells like a skin cell, that's not passed to offspring. So say you're a human person and you're about to have a baby and you've just had, I don't know, a mole form on your arm. That does not mean that your baby is going to get that exact mole because that is a mutation in your somatic cells in your skin. OK, only mutations that are already in the germline cells can be passed on to offspring. OK, OK, so summary of this kind of first part of this first key area. Obviously, your somatic cells, they're your generalised body cells, not including the ones that are your reproductive ones, and your germline are basically your precursor to your sperm and your egg cells. The things you really need to know and really be on top of is summarised in this table here. So in terms of somatic cells, so the ones I talked about at the start, your general body cells, they go through mitosis only. They have always got a diploid chromosome number, they make more somatic cells. So, so a somatic cell goes through mitosis, it produces more somatic cells, and they are found all throughout the body. Okay, whereas germline cells, they could do mitosis or meiosis and or, okay, the actual germline cells are still got a diploid number of chromosomes, okay? They will produce haploid gametes, but the, the germline cells themselves are diploid. The types of cell that they will make after division, if they do mitosis, it'll be more germline cells. If they do meiosis, it'll be gametes, and they are only found in the reproductive organs. Okay, now that's essentially it for somatic and germline cells. Okay, this summary table is very helpful, particularly for the homework. Um, but if you're struggling with anything, go back through individual slides, take your time with it, and review. Just make sure you know definitely very familiar with the content of this table. Yeah. And we are going to be posting two more videos for key area one. So uh, look out for them as well. So like we said, this is the first part. We're going to do two more just so it's in much more manageable, manageable chunks for you. But these will form the basis of all your notes. If you think a video like this helps, like you prefer this where we are talking about it rather than this way, which we will also post, which is just the notes without our lovely voices over them, please say, because if people are liking them and find them useful, we will do more. If you're all thinking, actually, we'd rather not listen to you. We'd rather just sit and read it. We're not going to spend all our time making it because it does take a bit of time, but we are happy to do it if it helps you. So please say if you think this is useful. Okay? Yeah. Right. Enjoy.